The Lacaparo Wildlife Management Area covers 33,000 acres, with 9,000 of those acres designated for wildlife refuge. The heart of the refuge is Rosemont Island. Managed for wildlife, the island is a paradise for deer, pheasants, waterfowl, and a variety of non-game species. It's off-limits year-round for non-DNR personnel, with only one exception. Well, we have 14 blinds. Anyone can take part that's disabled and, or, have a, or have a medical condition. Each fall, the DNR opens the island to a special deer hunt put on by capable partners. They're a group of volunteers helping physically challenged sportsmen and women enjoy the outdoors in Minnesota. I've been a member for Capable Partners since 2004 and I love the organization and what they do for disabled people and stuff like that. So, To me it's very important. I mean it, it helps people who are in wheelchairs, uh, people on crutches like me that cannot get around very well. This has just been wonderful to be able to be out and do this. Never found another organization like this, so we've only been able to hunt on our own. We have property where we live, but it's not set up for me to do this sort of thing. For nine days each season, disabled hunters are able to sit in blinds built specifically for them. Oh, it's got a ramp, it's elevated, um, you can see for a long ways. It's beautiful. With this room for me and my able-bodied assistant, it's just wonderful. The island itself is gorgeous. It's just breathtaking. Cricks and streams and cornfields and high grass and timber. It's just amazing. Ramming speed. Ramming speed. <laughs> Gotta take my leg off. You want your... Uh... Brent is a good friend of the family. He was another encouraging factor in getting me out here. He's a very good hunter. He hunts on our property at home. He's taught me a lot as far as what deer, what it sounds like when deer come towards you, what it sounds like when they're in the timber, what it sounds like, and what their behaviors are. So he's taught me a lot. And he talks to them, and he draws them in. He, he can call to them, and they, we had two this morning that were walking a doe and a buck. And our, the road that leads into our, towards our blind, they were stopped at the end, and he bleated like a deer. And the buck who was with the doe, he goes, oh, you go ahead, hon, I'm going to check this out. <laughs> and so he came in and up the road, and he came halfway up the road till he saw our vehicles. And then he goes, well, I'll just sneak off this side, come around the side and see what she looks like. And he came all the way around the side until he goes, oh, well, that doesn't smell like a deer, so I'm out of here. <laughs> but he was a big, handsome boy. I don't need a trophy on my wall. I don't need, that's not what I'm after. I want tender meat, juicy meat, sweet girls. <laughs> We were in the blind and I heard something behind us. And so sure enough, a uh, doe and two fawns eventually walked over into our line of sight and he handed me the crossbow. I took the safety off and I got her in, shot her. Then she took off. We went a little ways and the fawns went after her. They went one way, she went the other. And I was certain that I hit her, but I don't think we found her. We, I know we didn't find her. Um, it's really tall out there. I saw both fawns leave, but I did not see her leave. She just kept sinking a little bit, little bit, little bit, and then didn't see her anymore. So I thought she was out there. When you slow down the footage, it appears her bolt may have caught a branch, allowing that doe to duck it. An unfortunate drawback of using a crossbow. I have degenerative joint disease. And so I've had both my shoulders replaced and I've lost a knee to it. And it's easier for me to hold. It's not as heavy, it's not as long. It's much more lightweight and easier to maneuver. The DNR supports wildlife by planting food plots across the island. It's sometimes it's corn, sometimes it's um, beans, sometimes it's just alfalfa fields. So they kind of rotate the fields out here a little bit. But I like it because it benefits everything out here. 
I have, well, uh, right now I have a Mossberg 935 semi-automatic. And I have a, it's called a tree pod and I slide it onto my foot plate and I can move my gun all around wherever I want. It's pretty uh, articulated. We were in stand six, along with Dean's able-bodied Jim. Plenty of room for the three of us. Even though it seemed like every time we've seen a deer, I was spinning around in a circle. Oh, there's deer over here. So I was back around the other way. And Having three sets of eyes, though, gives you at least three different directions to look for deer. That looks like a bigger deer. He's running. Yeah, that's a nice buck. And then when the buck did come up, um, the cameraman was in the way, and <laughs> so is my able body. <laughs> uh, Sorry about that. It's always the cameraman's fault. Yeah, and that's right. <laughs> he kept seeing deer. There's deer over here, so I was going around one way. Jim would say, there's a deer over here, so I was spinning around the other way. <laughs> Uh, no, no, it's fun. Even though these hunters have the chance to bag the buck of a lifetime, it's the opportunity that matters to them. You seen a lot of deer though, didn't you? Yeah, isn't it something? <laughs> yeah, that was fun. <laughs> I, I had a huge buck at 30 yards, but I was facing the wrong way. I turned around and he seen me. It, it's like a dream hunt, it really is. I can't believe it. I just like being out in the outdoors and being out in God's green earth, or God's cre creation, so. Ultimately, that's what it's all about. But this year was extra special for Lance. Well, here we are, October 4th, afternoon hunt with Cable Partners on Rosemont Island, and the great hunter, Lance Tevin, bags his biggest buck of his lifetime. He's a 14-pointer, isn't he? Yes, he is. What a big deer. 